think that we've reached a point where our own national security policy is degrading our national security. And I think that, um, you know, I was talking to some college students last night who came to a, a sneak preview of our film, and I was reminding them that when, when Governor George Ryan of Illinois um, issued a, a moratorium uh, on the death penalty, it, it wasn't because he was like a flaming member of Amnesty International. It was because there was DNA evidence produced that exonerated people on death row. And they realized through, a lot of it was work done by students at Northwestern University, the Innocence Project, realized that they had put innocent people to death. And George Ryan issued that moratorium so that they could review the death penalty policy in the state of Illinois. We've reached that point with the drone strikes. We reached it, I think, long ago. But we, no matter what you think, even if you tactically think it's a smarter way of waging war, and you want to argue that, that, that drone strikes are an acceptable way to deal with individuals the United States deems to be irreconcilable terrorists and have to die, even if you agree with that, then you should, you should still realize that we are killing so many innocent civilians and so many people that we don't know that we're actually inspiring the very people that you want taken out in a drone strike later. So if you call for a moratorium on it and investigate who have we actually been killing, I, I believe that, that, that we as a society will determine it's been a totally counterproductive policy. Number two, I support Senator Ron Wyden's efforts to try to, and Wyden has been great on this issue, to try to get the White House to produce for the American people documents indicating how one gets on the kill list and how you get off the kill list. And, and Wyden is one of the few people that has, that has actually raised this issue. I, I wish that, that he would, would fight harder, but it's hard to slam someone who's already the only one pretty much doing it. Um, and so, you know, Wyden has been fighting a heroic battle over the course of both administrations, Obama and Bush. Wyden told me, and this is in our film, Wyden said that there are, there are two laws in America. There, there's one law that we all can read and publicly access, and we can interpret it, and reasonable people probably would interpret it in the same way. And then there's how those same laws have been interpreted in secret by the administration. And this goes for certain provisions of the Patriot Act that are secret, and, and provisions of other laws, and the policy of the kill program. We think that there are terrorists being put on the list based on some kind of rigorous intelligence gathering process. That's actually not the case in some of these cases. So I think there should be transparency. And I, so I would, expl well, I wouldn't have a kill policy like that. But I would, I do think that they should make public the, do the, the legal rationale, the actual legal rationale used to target not only Americans, but non-American citizens around the world, and to have a moratorium on the drone strike so we can actually understand who's been killed in our name in these drone wars. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Just for a moment, to the legal Right. Well, yeah, yeah. The question was about why, you know, are there voices within the CIA or the intelligence community that have been speaking up about this? And just, and you're also emphasizing on a pragmatic level. Um, I, I think I know for a fact from from talking to people in U.S. intelligence that there is a there is a chill effect that has just raced through the intelligence and military community because of the prosecution of whistleblowers and the and the and the the. Uh, unprecedented use of the Espionage Act. You know, the, 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 the stakes for speaking up are very, very high. Thomas Drake, who was a, a bigwig at the NSA, who blew the whistle on the warrantless wiretapping program, and uh, he had his life ruined for doing that. He, I mean, he works at an Apple store right now, which is nothing wrong with working at the, at the Apple store. And Apple employees are very nice people if you talk to them in a mall or whatever. But that guy was like a top official at the National Security Agency working to you know, develop systems for US national security, and he blew the whistle on something that he thought was illegal and the American people had a right to know. And they tried to prosecute him and go after him, and they, they ultimately had to settle it. But John Kiriakou, who blew the whistle on, on some of the torture the CIA was doing, is in prison right now. The, you know, no one wants to speak out and see themselves their lives ruined. Internal, 